My next guest is the founder and first student at Live Big, Die Empty, here to help you live prosperously and on purpose and give the world everything you were meant to bring it. Please welcome Mr. Mark Anthony McCray to the show. What is up, Mr. Mark? How are you doing, Clark? I'm excited to be here. There they go. I was waiting on the ovation. <laughs> I, did. I was getting geeked up. I was getting so excited. I, oh, I know man. it's just, I know it's just canned clapping, but it really does do something for you. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's awesome. You know, I, I'm lost without it, Mr. Gray. I'm totally lost without it. I'm glad they they realized who was coming on the floor, and uh, once they realized it was you. They stood up and gave you your due diligence. So there we go. There you go. There you go. The other thing is, uh, seriously, I was enjoying DJ Clark Garrison with the Sade there at the break. I, I love it. That is unquestionably my girl. Unquestionably. Uh, I, don't, I don't care if she gets to be 90 years old. I would still stand in front of her and clap. So thank you for that. That gets me in the mood to talk and share. Man, my pleasure. You know what? She might even be 90. She never ages, so we would never know anyway. <laughs> you know what? I mean, we would up? not know, and I would not care. <laughs> she is no, still a timeless beauty. A, <laughs> hey, Mark, obviously it's a pleasure <clears throat> for me personally to have you on the show. I've been looking forward and had circled this date on the calendar for quite some time. You know, because I follow you on Twitter. You know, obviously I've been watching um, what you're doing on Facebook and and your stance for uh, improving people's life through through having a purpose, man. Based on your bio, I know you've got a, an empowering story. If you don't mind, could you share a little bit about your journey that led you to helping others? Well, sure. Uh, I don't mind sharing that at all. Now, I have to warn you up front. i got to warn you two things about me. Number one, I'm fairly transparent when you allow me to be. So if if you and your audience can take that, I don't mind sharing. And then number two, I'm fairly silly. I don't take a whole lot of things too seriously. So um, so even things that I, that I look back in my past that may be painful or may not be comfortable to talk about, uh, I'm usually pretty far removed enough from them to have a little bit of perspective and, and just kind of talk with them a little, talk about them a little lightheartedly. So sure, um, you know, Clark, when I talk about living big and dying empty, it really comes down to fu- fundamentally one thing. I am my target market. That's why I call myself founder and first student. And then I, but I, realize, I realize it's not just me, but let me explain what I mean. Uh, as I started getting out there and learning more about myself, what I learned is that there were a lot of people who felt like they were living like I felt like I was living, which was – underneath my privilege, underneath my purpose, just below the maximum that I was able to to produce out of my life. So uh, that bothered me. I'm not really one to really be comfortable at mediocrity. I'm not comfortable with mediocrity. I'm not comfortable with it in myself. But what I learned over time is that God wasn't comfortable with mediocrity out of me either. And that's not to say that he's – sitting up there shaking his finger and bashing me, but he's longing for me, longing for many of us to get out there and just really do better, to really get out of us those things that he put in us before he sent us here uh, on assignment. So that's kind of the overarching thing as far as my bio is concerned. Uh, You know, what can I tell you? I'm a country boy from Texarkana, Texas. I'm an Army brat. uh, Son of Lieutenant Colonel Alvin McCray, decorated war and... uh, the military, you know, I, I don't, he wouldn't like me to use the term hero. He's not really one of those kinds of guys that goes around with bumper stickers all over his truck and wearing medals, you know, so everybody can salute him when he goes down to Chick-fil-A. That, that's that's not really him. <laughs> <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. But, but I will say that uh, a lot of that was really, uh, you know, literally I was born on the 4th of July, <laughs> And an army brat, you know, really born on the Fourth of July. So all of that sort of thing was huge to me. Boy Scouts, uh, God and country, you know, apple pie. Well, you know, like I said, I'm from Texarkana, so that's pecan pie and sweet potato pie. So, you know, <laughs> all those things were an important part of my life. Went off, went to college, got into a career, uh, had a great time with with career and ministry and. 
you know, some point in there, I think I kind of hit a realization, and the realization was I really didn't see that I was making any kind of impact on the world at all. So it didn't matter how much money I was making, and I was doing well. It didn't matter what I was doing with my career, and I was doing well. It didn't matter what I was doing in ministry, and I was doing well. I just knew that I wasn't yet moving in the arenas in which God had designed me to move. And your your previous guest was talking about how there are certain things that you just feel designed to do. Well, for me, it became more and more evident that I felt designed to do two things, and I laugh thinking about it. Number one, to absolutely get my butt kicked up and down the road in life and, you know, stick mm. with me, but I, I, I felt designed for it. But number two, to learn the lesson so I can teach other people how to come out of that. And so right. <laughs> so what I found is that uh, I have a very uh, stubborn and resilient personality that could take a lot of punishment, take a lot of abuse, but not, not for the sake of it, Clark, for the sake of being a risk taker, for the sta- sake of stepping out there and trying new things to figure out what works. You know, I'm not, I'm not afraid to stub my toe. I'm not afraid to get punched in the gut. And I never really understood what the purpose of those were until I really saw that God was teaching me along the way, but not just for me, so that I could teach others. Yeah.